I S U P K. Hey, Salam, man. It's Priest Kevin in Doha with the I S U P K. And the Commander Johnny Yahana in California, man. It's like all blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians. Subscribe to this channel, man. You want true salvation? You gotta learn from the priests and prophets of the I S U P K, man. Subscribe to that channel. Hit that button, man. And it's there with that. Salam. All I ever wanted was to be a gangster. Little did I know I was in danger. Decisions that I made provoked the Lord's anger Pray to him all the time, but I was just a stranger All I ever wanted was to be a gangster Little did I know I was in danger Decisions that I made provoked the Lord's anger Pray to him all the time, but I was just a stranger All I wanted was to be a gangster And shot call To be known with them niggas letting shots off Either that or the right hand to the top door Funny how we see vanity and not the lives lost Can't be focused on a life that's hopeless Out there pumping, not knowing the Lord will kill you for that hocus pocus Used to roll with niggas that cook dope with weaponry Same ones claim they love you, I had your life in jeopardy And I know my mother won't success for me But that G should take a girl straight to ecstasy Proverbs chapter 11 verse 21 Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished. You understand? A lot of us out there thinking that there's some good uh, oppressors out there, some good colonizers out there, some good uh, Europeans out there. They give us handouts, they give us Section 8, they give us welfare, they give us tanning, they give us housing, all that. We think they're some good people, right? But what God said about this? So look it. The wicked shall not be unpunished. You understand? He called them the wicked. Who's the wicked? It's the oppressors. It's the, it's the same people since the 1400s that came over here and took your brothers, the Taino Indians, and destroyed them and enslaved them. And once they did that, they went to the other so-called Indians throughout the Americas and did the same to your brother, black man. Did the same thing to your, your sisters, black man. You know what I'm saying? The children, black man. You understand? The, the Latinos, the Native Indians, they're your blood relatives, you understand? A lot of black people don't know that because of church, because they want us to join hand to hand with our oppressors, but God called them the wicked. Hold that, Proverbs was a Job 9 and 24. I gotta give you a little education on who is the wicked according to the Bible. Right. Who is God calling the wicked? Because right. unlike your church, they'll label everybody. Now everybody can do some wickedness, and that is true. But there's a specific race of people that God calls the wicked according to the Bible. You got it? Let's go. Job chapter 9, verse 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. That's like you got hit one plus one equal two, right? right? The earth, the planet earth, is given into the hand of the wicked. So who controls America? Who controls Canada? Who controls Central and South America? Who controls Australia? Who controls all of Europe, you know what I'm saying? The whole planet Earth. It only has to be one people by by default, right? It's the very people who've oppressed the Indians since the 1492, who've oppressed black people, who've oppressed all Hispanics, all black people, all Native American Indians, and go about their daily lives like everything's copacetic and lovely. You know what I'm saying? This is the very same people that they now want to go up into space and go to Mars, but God called them what? The Earth! It's given into the hand of the wicked. Yeah, that God calls them the wicked. That's right. I want to know, I got to ask the Christians, why aren't we calling our oppressors the wicked? That's the million dollar question, you know what I'm saying? Why are we calling them the wicked, seeing as all the destructive things they've done to us, you know what I'm saying? And continue to do to us, you know what I'm saying? You know what's the problem? Go back to the, uh, Proverbs 1124. Here's the problem, read. Tell the world God. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24. So like it, 11 and 24? 21, Kana Wakan. No hand joining hand. Not right there. That's the problem. We want to join hands with our oppressors. We want to join hands with the colonizers, I'm saying the Americans. That's what we want to do. We want to keep a, 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 them in good relationship, you know what I'm saying? Meanwhile, they don't want to keep a good relationship with us, you know what I'm right. saying? All they expect, talking about giving us an opportunity, what do they call it? Um, what's that? Uh, uh, um, affirmative action. Come on, Captain. Affirmative action, that's all bogus, you know what I'm saying? That's all to naught. 
because otherwise, why would they do the crimes that they continue doing that they do thus to this day? And you got to ask yourself that question, brothers and sisters. You got to ask yourself that question, you know what I'm saying? Why do they down with people like Donald Trump and all of them that are just like that? And even the ones that smile on our face continue to separate your Latino brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because they the work it that the earth is given unto. You know what I'm saying? Read it from the top. Go, hand, join in hand. Saying, now this, this statement right here will be a great disappointment to everybody that believes in the stupidity, Nazi statement that Martin Luther King said. You know what I'm saying? So what he said, that, that he had a dream that little black, um, uh, black boys and white girls could hold hands, right? It wasn't that the dream, that I had a dream speech, right? Wasn't that part of it? Well, God said this. Go, hand. Join in hand, hand join in hand. Read the wicked shall not be unpunished. Yeah, what God said, the wicked shall not be unpunished. And guess what? All the MLK lovers, sorry to tell you, but they're gonna come a day when God is going to destroy them from off the face of the earth. And if you join with them, you are going to get destroyed alongside with them. Let's get another skip, brother. Get a Jeremiah two, Jeremiah chapter two and verse twelve. You know what I'm saying? This is what it's about, brothers and sisters. We are here. Like I said, we come here to tell you the truth, man. We ain't here to sing. We ain't here to dance. We are here to tell you what's in this Bible. Something that even if you go to church and they got a Bible all day long in their hand, they never read what God really says in the Bible about anything. You know what I'm saying? It's all about hallelujah and Jesus Christ. Praise Jesus. I got the blood of Jesus. But let me tell you something. Jesus Christ hated the Romans. I gotta tell you, keep it real with you. You know what I'm saying? Got it? Jeremiah 2 and 12? All right. Jeremiah! 2 and 10, sorry. Call it call. Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 6. For pass over the house. Verse 12. 14. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 14. Is Israel a servant? Saying God is asking an important question. God is asking every black man and every Hispanic and every Native American Indian an important question, a question that we don't ask ourselves to this day. We too busy joining hand with America. God said this, read it again. Is Israel a servant? Is Israel a servant, meaning what? Are we going to continue to serve another people? and serve another people. Are we that? Are we servants? Uh, is that what all we are about? And who's Israel? If you didn't know, I already mentioned it. Blacks and Latinos and Native American Indians. This book right here is our history book. Right. It's a history about blacks and Hispanics and Native American Indians. We're the people of the Bible. If you didn't know today, right this second, now you've learned something new. You are the people of the Bible. So is Israel a homebound servant? Read. Is he? A homeborn slave. Is he a what? Homeborn slave. You understand? God is letting black people know, and Latinos and Native American Indians know. Are we homeborn slaves, man? Are we bred from our birth to adulthood to be slaves? Is that all? Are we worth black people? Are we only worth to be slaves, Latinos and Native Indians? Is that it? Is that all the life is about for us just to be the slaves to our oppressors? Is that it? If that's what God wondering about us. Is Israel a homeborn slave? Read. Why is he spoiled? God is asking, why are we spoiled, man? Why are we destroyed, man? You understand? Why is it? Because we bred to be homeborn servants. We're bred to loving everybody but ourselves, you know what I'm saying? Because why of Christianity, you know what I'm saying? Because of the things that go on in the Christian church that teach our brothers and sisters to be complacent and to be docile, just like Bolton Jan's brother who hugged the murderer, the murderer of his very own flesh and blood. And then the bailiff on top of that, go and finger her hair. It's, go, it's okay, Miss Amber, it's okay. And the judge come down and give her a Bible. How ridiculous is that? No other race of people would have hugged the murderer. If that be the case, then why didn't America hug bin Osama bin Laden? That's what I want to know. I'm trying to figure, I'm still scratching my head over this. Why, why, you know what I'm saying? Why, why ever since 9-11, 
did in America just simply say, you know what, Osama bin Laden, you don't, you know, you just made a mistake and gave him a hug. Why? You know what I'm saying? Because they understand something. They're not bred to be homeborn servants. They ain't there. You know what I'm saying? But we are because of our leaders. We are because of church, because of religion. It got us totally destroyed. You understand? Why are we spoiled? God is asking. Let's get Lamentations. No, Skalakia. Let's come, um, not Lamentations if I could. Psalm 6 and 8. Psalm chapter 6 and verse 8. You know what I'm saying? This is real right here, brothers and sisters, man. You're going to see, you're going you're gonna to know something today, something that your church would never sit down with you. And guess what? If that's supposed, that's just you know, some hypotheticals, okay? Let's suppose Reverend Porsche desires to talk about, I don't know, that case with J um, Both and John. Let's suppose, you know, his speech is going to lead us still to, you know what, but God, Jesus said, love thy enemy, love thy enemy. And here's what we don't understand. The enemy, it ain't talking about everyone. The only enemy that's talking about is about when you have beef with black people, when you have beef with Hispanics and Native American Indians. That's the only, that's the only people that you should love. Other than that, it's called act of war. You know what I'm saying? Read. The book of Psalms, chapter six, verse eight. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. Yeah, God is saying this. God is saying depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity, meaning all ye sinners. And guess what? Church breeds sinners. Have you done your Sunday best with your saucer hats and your Bible? Three piece suit, they the shoes wearing, cologne wearing, tie, right? The shininess of everything. The Rolls Royce, you know, the pimp rolled up. And guess what? All they breeding is nothing but sinners. And we see it every day. Look at the, the case with, um, what's his name? Eddie Long. Eddie Long was a mega a church pastor. Had a large following, you know what I'm saying? He praised Jesus, but was committing more sin than a little bit, you know? And guess what? All of them do that. Every last one of those preachers, like Creflo Dollars and T.D. Jakes, Jesse Jackson, Al Sharpton, and the list goes on and on and on. God said this, depart what? Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity, for the Lord have heard the voice of my weeping. God said he heard the voice of our weeping, of his, of, of our, my weeping, he said. And guess what? Here's the problem, right? In, in that courtroom, you had the brother hugging the, the murderer, the judge hugging the murderer, and, and uh, what's his name? The bailiff hugging and passing the fingers through the hair, combing Miss Amber's hair, all weeping for her with her. And she worrying about 10 years. That woman, if she lucky to pass five years in jail, that'd be a miracle, you know what I'm saying? Because guess what? She got the complexion for the protection, you know what I'm saying? Right. She got the complexion for the protection. She might not see 10 years, you know what I'm saying? She might not see that. And that's all she get. If you think the bailiff thought about that, you think about the judge, you thought about the judge, has anybody, has the judge even contemplated with damn, you know what? They took, they took that young brother from my sister. But my she murdered my, my, my sister's son. You know what I'm saying? She murdered my sister's son. The son, the brother, the brother of both and John should have said, I ain't giving this woman no hug. He just killed my She just killed my brother. She just did the very same thing her forefathers have done in the past to my people. You thought anybody cared about going to the mother? Heck, the mother was more hardcore than the son. The mother felt some type of way about her getting 10 years. Yeah, and it's a shame. They put that on TV to show you the mind, the mind of black people in America today. We broken down. We broken down. That's why God had to come back and ask, are we homeborn servants? You know what I'm saying? Right. God had to come back and ask, are we homeborn saints? He had to come back and say, why are you destroyed? You obviously, we obviously saw that with that courtroom spectacular. You know what I'm saying? Well, keep reading here. God is not one. God is saying about our weeping. We weep for the murderer, but nobody weep for the victim. Nobody weep for the victim. That's the problem. Imagine if Amber Giver was another black woman that killed a black brother. Or if she was either Hispanic or Native American in the war. They would have they would have caused chaos in that courtroom. They would have caused chaos in that courtroom. But that would have showed what? How we destroyed. Keep going. Color go. 
Verse 9. I said, we can leave it right there. Let's go to um, Jeremiah 9 and 18 now. Right? Jeremiah 9 and 18. All right? That's what we're going to do. We're going to go right here. It's important for black people to hear this. It's important for Latinos and Native American Indians to hear this, man, because we do need a refresher. We do need to be reminded time and time again that these oppressors would never love us. Stop playing. We got to stop playing ourselves out. We got to stop playing and lying to our own selves. I know everybody hates to be lied to, right? Let's be honest. Nobody likes to be lied to, right? But guess what? We wake up every day lying to our own selves. See the problem what we have? We keep, we, keep, we keep trying to convince us that one day, maybe one day, if we keep hope alive, our oppressors will now fully love us to the umpteenth powers. Well, I guess what? It's 2019 and that ain't happening. <laughs> so so the, we gotta now go come to another conclusion. You got it, brother? Let's go. The book of Jeremiah, chapter, tw chapter 9, verse 18. And let them make haste and take up a wailing for us. Yeah. It said, let them make haste, meaning quickly, and take up a wailing for us, meaning a, 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 a cry for us, right? God wanted that from Israel to do to unto other Israels when some oppressor murder us, hurt us, do something wrong to us. But do we do that? No, we don't do that. We don't do that because of Christianity. We don't do that because our pastors, our reverends have told us to hug our enemies to hug the very people that kill us. Read. That our eyes may run down with tears and our eyelids gush out with water. It's supposed to be that, man. We're supposed to be crying in pain, in agony for when there's a death like Trayvon Martin and Freddie Gray, you know what I'm saying? Sandra, what's her name? Sandra Bland, you know what I'm saying? Jose Abrego. They're supposed to be massive crying among blacks and the and Native American Indians because there's an oppressor that is still killing us. But we don't do this to ourselves. We will cry and beg tears for the murderer of our people. Something wrong with us black people. Something definitely wrong with us. It's called Stockholm Syndrome. You go look, you gonna go look that up. Now we have we are suffering from so Stockholm syndrome. Read. Cut it down. Verse 19. For a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion. Zion is you, black man, you Hispanic, you Native American Indians. We are Zion, not those people over there claiming to be Jews, but are not according to the Bible. It's us. We're the only ones that are being so massively oppressed that we can't even see it. That we're crying for our damn enemies instead of ourselves. Read. Colonel God. How are we spoiled? Read it again. How are we spoiled? How are we spoiled? Once again, God is asking this question, black man. How are we spoiled? How are we destroyed? And you know what's the element right here? Not just not just our oppressors that are number one to blame, but our damn leaders, man. Our damn leaders are at fault too. Our damn leaders are not taking care of the flock, brothers and sisters. We left them by chance out here, you understand? We left to our own vices out here. When there should be a leadership that's supposed to care for every black and Hispanic and Native American Indian, the well-being, who's caring for black people well-being? Uh, can anybody tell me? Is it Al Sharpton and his National Action Network? I think not. I don't think Al Sharpton doing a damn thing. Hey, Martin Luther King, well, you see what that happened right there. That was a waste of time. That march, it was so messed up. That march, you know, he brought brothers down here from the South and abandoned them. That should have told brother something about this joker. And so on and so forth. Gerardo Rivera, when has he said anything about Latinos like that? Huh? When has the comedian Louis Guzman said anything about Jennifer Lopez? Said anything about the, what's been happening in the, the war and the borders detainees? Huh? Bunch of failures is what they are. Only commanding General Johanna, and look him up. Commanding General Johanna of the ISUPK cares for every black and Hispanic and Native American Indians, whether you know it or not. That's right. Why we are here is because he following the order from Christ to come out to the highways and byways and teach our peoples and teach them what is going on in our hood.
what is going on on these streets. Because our leaders ain't doing a damn thing about it. They're letting us die out here. It's a sad case, man. God asking, why are we spoiled? How are we spoiled, man? When white man keeps spoiling us all the time. Our leaders allow us to get spoiled all the time, man. It's ain't ridiculous. I know you brothers got to be tired of living in the hood. In the, I know deep down inside, you damn tired of waking up to the same bogus nonsense, man. I know I am. I know I am. If I'm tired, I know you tired too. Trying to find something to follow Had loyalty, every man tried to borrow Felt pain, and a lot of sorrow Got betrayed, so packed I didn't even have my heart broke Living confused, about to lose hope Cops got me on the side of the road Like a sideshow, need an antidote before I croak Now I'm setting fire to rhythm man blues Call this guitar smoke Rebel with no cause, trying to find direction The world got me vexed Picked up a bad lick of habit that's hereditary from oppression Felt like my life was on fire trying to find an exit Now look, 10 G's plus a good wreck Sometimes a follower is a soldier Trying to find a good shepherd Plus when you in hell, how do you excel? Wisdom the breath of life, I don't believe in fairy tale Listen well to what I tell No call it can cause pain Something that a rebel knows very well can't you tell I was sent from the Lord? Got a tongue like a two-edged sword.